You know something, this is truly amazing. I've been running my mouth about DNA, oh, DNA this and DNA that. And I had this thing tested for DNA, and it's human, mitochondrial DNA, and I, I was pretty confident about my understanding of DNA. And then I start to dig a little bit deeper, because they say 98% of the human joint genome that does not encode for assembly, like your bones and how much of this and how many, 98% of that is they call junk DNA. Now, 98% of what? Because I saw another one that said all of our DNA is virtually identical. Your DNA is 99. I think one or nine percent. Well, hold on, sir. Okay, so let's take it from the top. Everybody's heard of DNA, and you heard of chromosomes. Well, first of all, what is a chromosome? All right, you know I've done a lot of work with DNA and the mud fossils and all that. This has been DNA tested and everything. Now. Every cell, basically, in the person's body has the same DNA. Most DNA is located in the cell nucleus, which is the center of the cell. All right, you have the cell, and in the nucleus you have your chromosome, which is your DNA. It's called nuclear DNA. That is, that is your toes, your fingers, and all that stuff programming, basically. But there's a ton more that's in that cell that they call junk DNA. So it says a small amount can be found also, also be found in the mitochondria where it's called mitochondrial DNA. Now let's look at this because this is uh, very very deep. All right, you see this? Chromosomes are thread-like structures <laughs> made of proteins and a single molecule of DNA that serve to carry the genomic information from cell to cell genome is nothing more than a program and when you change that alter that program somehow all the the dna in your body has to have that new program as far as i'm concerned now in plants and animals including humans humans chromosomes reside in the nucleus of the cells just like i was showing and it's this kind of thing right here and it's right inside the nucleus the center of the cell and every cell has basically the same chromosomes and this is this, where do I show you how advanced that gets? And there's only four molecules. All right, think about this now. This is a chromosome. Every cell has the same basic chromosome. And when it unfurls, this is what happens. This is what's packed into this. Look, this is the DNA strands. One single DNA strand coming out. If you continue how far it breaks down into, these are just, it's still filtering down. That's just one of those strands all the way out to there. That's the DNA. That's DNA. Can you imagine? All right, this time I'm going to break it down a little bit slower so you can understand what's going on here. This is what a chromosome bundles together and looks like for some reason. But inside of these, each one of these, there's a bazillion miles of of DNA strands. So I'm going to stop this as we go along. Boom. All right, here we go. This is what's inside of these. And we're going to strip down until we take one of these strands. But there's, you can see there's a lot of that single strand. But it breaks down into one final strand. Now, we're going out down that strand and watching what it turns into. All right, so this strand has strand is unwinding its own self and inside of that unwound part is this these are the CTAGs and they're they're on a, a sugar phosphate backbone and they basically glue like this and that and that's all they can do is go a certain way it's not all that complicated but it's not well understood so now we're coming way out to the filament out to the actual DNA double helix you see that now? That can strip sideways like this. You can strip that wide open just like a zipper. And when it comes back together, it will be exactly the same as it was when you pulled it apart. And that's because of the way the, 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 they can only hook back together in a certain configuration. So only, uh, I think a C can go to a G and a T to an A. 
So when you rip them apart, that's, they have to come back to find the other guy that they're supposed to be attached to. It's, a, it's unbelievable. And when you see how, how it's tiny these things are, look at this. It started with that, and inside every one of these strands, it's just amazing. Think of all the program code that you could get using this, because that's nothing more than code, nothing more than a program code. And if the program isn't right, something doesn't work right in your body. And it could be structural, it could be something to do with your nerves, it could be all kinds of different things, but every gene sequence controls some function of the body. And then I believe that the junk DNA is where you start to, to take in your environment and your immunities will, will be stored in there to, to diseases and your reactions to, to certain things, your emotions even, your memories, all that will be stored in there somewhere. I believe there's enough storage in there to do that. And if 98% of it's just junk, they think, no. And they have done studies with identical twins. And when they're born and they're identical, they broke off the same DNA strand. So they have the same DNA to start with. But as soon as they hit the environment, brrr, all kinds of things change in their junk DNA because they're being exposed to different things. And so DNA changes all the time. As far as I'm concerned, that's, uh, you know, maybe I'm taking this wrong. I'd like to have some experts talk to me about this because the way I'm seeing this, your DNA is, is changing continuously as you live, moment by moment. So every cell in your body has to somehow get that signal, hey, now we're going to be immune to certain disease or whatever. Because that's what happens, see? Well, let me just show you something how it does happen. All right, this is where chemistry and biology overlap very seriously. What are bacteria, enzymes, and chemicals? Bacteria are living cells, which I'll show you in a minute. They have the capabilities of consuming waste. They eat things. They can reproduce, so once they're established, they'll keep reproducing themselves. And they actually produce enzymes. Better said, bacteria are the factories that produce enzymes. When the right bacteria are present in the right quantities, in the right conditions, they produce perfectly good enzymes, much more economically than people can manufacture. Now, enzymes are not alive. They're chemistry sets. They're complex chemicals produced by bacteria. Bacteria are the factories. They cannot reproduce. Once they're, they're out and they've done their job and they're destroyed, that's the end of them. So you have to have more bacteria to make those. And they cannot consume wastes either. They're chemistry sets. They're chemistry. All right? They speed up chemical reactions without getting used themselves. And after they've finished all of the chemical reactions that are needed to be done, they just get washed out of the system. Now, enzymes can attack each other. All right? So we've got to have to understand digestion from other enzymes. This is a molecular battleground. All right. In every person, there is more bacteria in them than this of cells, than there is a view of cells. These are single-celled bacteria, and they have their own DNA. See this here? This is their DNA. Now, that DNA is programmed to make ribosomes. All right? They make these ribosomes. Well, what's a ribosome? Well, a ribosome is a chemistry set. That makes the enzyme. I'll show you in a second. So these are single cells. They zip around your body using these flagellas because they're in a fluid-filled highway and they go to where they're needed. And they zip around consuming waste and everything because the bacteria can consume the waste. But the DNA and the ribosomes cannot. The ribosome creates an enzyme. So remember this. That little blue ball is going to be I'm going to show you what that is. They're going to call it, I believe, a trigger. All right, so this is the ribosome. It comes out and there's a sheath around it. The sheath unravels and out pops this enzyme. And this is elegant. Or it could be either an enzyme or it could be a protein. Are they the same? Well, yes and no. They're both extremely sophisticated chemistry sets. Only this one builds things primarily, and this one breaks things. An enzyme is a, is a 
is a destroyer of food products and so forth that come through your body. You can't absorb fats and carbohydrates and all these other things until they're broken down. That does it. It hits it, poof, breaks it down like just like that. And it also, in a, in a different configuration, it could create proteins to make bones and teeth and everything else. So that's, that is from that ribosome. Now don't forget, that's the ribosome right there, that ball. And how does that get programmed? Well, there's a program inside of the bacteria that collects all these different polypeptides. There's 20 of them amino acids and it chains them all together in a certain sequence and it goes and spits out the um, RNA which is the um, messenger RNA so it comes out of the ribosome as I'm a messenger here's what you're gonna do and it programs things all right so here's the whole sequence happen here's the whole, the cell the bacteria single cell it has its own DNA, remember we talked about that, and its, it's DNA is programmed for one specific purpose, is to make an exact enzyme. When I say exact, I mean exact. Now, th that's what happens, it creates the ribosome. It comes out, and this is the ribosome here. So this whole thing happens inside the ribosome. All of those little polypeptide chains come, and they program, chick -chick 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 -chick, and they program the messenger RNA, and the messenger RNA comes up and splices in to our DNA. It changes something in here, all right? And it uses a, a, an enzyme. Anytime you see ACE on the end, po RNA polymerase, that's an enzyme. This cloud is an enzyme of, and this one is too. They have to break bonds and do all kinds of things, and that's what the enzymes do. So this is the whole sequence happening right here. And if you don't have this exactly correct, and this bacteria is not making the correct you know, ribosome, you're just not going to get the chemistry. And what chemistry? I'll show you the chemistry. It'll knock your socks off. All right, this is basically what an enzyme looks like. And these are all different program charges, and they are all have what they call dipole moments all over the place. So there's a, a zone of polarity here and a different one over here and one over here. Thousands of them. Thousands and thousands of them. And when it comes along and it finds another chemical that matches that description that it wants to break, it just goes click and it's done instantaneously. It's it's called click chemistry. And it's and this one doesn't get used at all. This one gets, you know what I mean? In other words, this is the enzyme. It's floating around through your body looking for something that it wants to break. and it ha But it doesn't break it, just anything. It has to see this particular chemistry, right? Exactly identical to this. And it will come up and go click, and this will go blah, blah, blah. And that'll be it. And then they'll just go on and break another one and break another one. So sooner or later, I don't know what exactly happens to them. Whether they just float around forever, I don't think so. I know catalase does. But anyway, catalase is another enzyme, and that disassociates extra oxygens, which they call reactive oxygen species. They, they cause damage to things, and they have to get rid of that extra oxygen. That's what catalase does. And that's in all plants and animals, catalase. And that's how I test for the blood. It's right in the membranes. It's saturated with it. So anyway, um, that, uh, that's what an enzyme looks like. And that's, that's pretty elegant. Now, if you don't have the bacteria, you're not going to get that. And if you need that enzyme for a certain purpose, which you're going to, you're just not going to have it. So now somebody else is going to have to try to fill in. And that's when you get, they call it cytokine storms. They send a whole batch of stuff. They say, I don't know what to do. Well, send them something else down there and see what happens. And before long, your body is attacking itself because it just doesn't know what to do. You don't have the enzymes. That's the way I'm seeing it. And I'm pretty sure that's the way it works. You know, I think I'm just going to leave it at this. As I told you, enzymes, without the enzymes, you're done. And if you don't have the bacteria, you don't have the enzymes. Now, there's four main enzymes involved in DNA replication. Are DNA helicase, RNA primase, DNA polymerase, and DNA ligase. All the ACEs. ACE. These enzymes work together to open up the strands of DNA and replication bubbles and copy the DNA strands semi-conservatively. 
Now, I believe they're talking about insertion of DNA strands. Hold on one second. Yeah, I believe what they're talking about right here is the insertion process. You know, you have to be able to create the correct enzymes. And then you have to be encoding them into a, a messenger RNA strand. And then that has to have the, an enzyme to break open this. That's what it's doing. The polymerase is, is, is cracking the bonds on them. Open up and it lets this in. And Once they're stuck together, that's it. From now on, you're going to be immune to that or whatever it is. And I also believe your emotions, your memories, and all that stuff somehow is being programmed. And it may be a whole different se sequence of programs. I don't know. But you know, your memory, I believe, mine's fading. I can tell you that right now. But when it worked well, I don't know exactly how, how, what the transfer of information was, but it, I could remember things pretty good. I still do, do all right, but it, I, I can see it's, on the, <laughs> it's heading down the hill. Anyway, um, I think I'm starting to fully understand the functioning of this DNA, and this is nothing more than machinery. Basically, this is a, a programmed biomolecular device all all life somehow this is, this is programmed I mean this is so programmed it's just unbelievable and when these enzymes react they say they speed up the chemical reactions called a catalyst you know how fast it speeds it up in less than one second, in about a quarter of a second, it does more chemistry than it would take years to do without the catalyst, or without the um, the catalyst. It would just go, tick, it's done. Other than that, it would just, uh, sooner or later it would happen, but it would just be a random sort of thing that would sort of slowly and eventually, oh yeah, there it is, a couple of years down the road. No, <laughs> that doesn't work for life. And a lot of it has to do with temperature. Plants, you got to have it with the sunlight. You know, it, it, there's a lot. We're we're able to eat, and of course the plants eat stuff too out of the soils. But you know, I don't know. It's uh, there's a lot to life that they really haven't fully understood yet, and there's a lot to our past that's totally not understood. So I'm going to leave it at that for today, but this is pretty interesting. DNA is, uh, is it's too involved to have just happened by accident. There's some master programmer, and you have to call him God. And I believe, you know, everybody says, oh, you talk about this, and, you know, you're taking God out of the equation. Absolutely not. I'm putting God in the equation, and I'm putting God's Son, Jesus Christ, at the top of the equation, because after everything was built, a bunch of people, whoever they were, gods, whatever, tried to screw it all up and destroy things. And finally, God's, the real God said, look, I'm going to take my son. I'll sacrifice him for you people. Listen to him, and you better do what you're supposed to do, or you're going to go to hell, and that's a bad place. So don't tell me I'm, I'm cutting God out of this. I'm... I'm trying to understand. Let me put it that way. I, I, I'm not hiding anything. I'm not trying to make something that isn't something. And I'm not trying to make something that isn't something something. I don't know if that made sense, but I hope you understand what I mean. I'm just trying to follow the clues. And uh, so far, I see a lot of what was written is accurate. And it's way beyond what the average human mind would, would dream up. So I'm going to leave it at that.